will go to work. The Dons know they are up against it for sure. Todd Golden in his second year as head coach. Shabazz, jumper. And the rebound pulled down there by Justin McCoy. So we take a look at our starting lineups that are brought to you by Carvana. Kihei Clark, lead guard for Virginia. Marcel, Hauser, McCoy, and Huff, the rest of the starters. Another turnover. Shabazz, Bouye, Milstead, as well, Yurkatam and Kane. Getting going, little morning hoops for you. Virginia playing their normal pack line defense, although when the ball went into the post for San Francisco on the first possession, Virginia did not go and double the post. Usually they try to get that ball out of there as quickly as they can, but they just played one-on-one -on -one in the post on the first possession. Milstead flips it up, couldn't hit McCoy to board, and Virginia the other way. But Virginia this year has such depth and versatility on the offensive end. They can really spread the floor. So you're going to see some different offensive concepts, a little more spread floor concept where they're a little more ball screens and they can shoot from the perimeter at five spots. Well, there is Tony Bennett. Of course, they are the reigning national champs. 2019, the NCAA tournament canceled last year due to the coronavirus pandemic. And he has put together a pretty amazing program and culture. Coming from Washington State. Jumper there. And that is good. Knocked down by Justin McCoy in the win over Towson J. They went 15 of 29 from three. Really remarkable. And you remember last year, especially early in the season, Boog, when we were there for their game against South Carolina, which the Gamecocks won in John Paul Jones Arena. And I wasn't sure that. Virginia was going to win half its games because they couldn't score. But they kept working and working and wound up, what, winning 23. They were 23 and 7, I think, at the end of the year when the plug got pulled by the pandemic. Really remarkable to stick with it. But this year, I mean, scoring is not going to be an issue. This team can score. The issue is going to be can you score enough points against Virginia's great defense? They've also added transfer Trey Murphy, the third. Coming off a 21-point effort. He'll be coming off the bench. That one flipped up and in. Justin McCoy, the sophomore with the bucket. And Virginia playing with great pace on the offensive end. It's going to be difficult to speed this team up because they can score from so many spots on the floor. And a bump. They got the foul by Kihei Clark. Mentioned Todd Golden, just 35 years old. Last year put together a fine season, 22 and 12, after taking over for the departed Kyle Smith, who moved on to Washington State. Todd, very familiar with the West Coast Conference, played for Randy Bennett at St. Mary's. Yeah, there's no, there's only one reason to dislike Todd Golden. And that is because he's a ridiculously young coach that looks younger than his age. When you say he's 35, you go, there's no way he's 35. He looks 24. He gets carded of more than his players. Let's put it that way. Foul inside, and Huff will go to the line. And Golden, kid from Phoenix, mentioned, walked on at St. Mary's, eventually became the team captain. He was with Kyle Smith as an assistant coach at Columbia. Then worked under Bruce Pearl at Auburn, and then was an assistant back under Kyle Smith at San Francisco. Before he went with Kyle Smith to Columbia, he was a sales and marketing executive with Comcast and IMG College. He's kind of like a Brad Stevens type start into coaching. Now Brad Stevens, if I remember right, was working with Eli Lilly when he first got his job as, a, as an assistant at Butler. And look how that turned out pretty well. Indeed. And it's been an interesting trip for the Dons. They took St. Bonaventure's spot here at Bubbleville.
and they prepped for three different teams for their first game. Originally, they were going to play LSU out of Nebraska. That got shut down, and actually before that, they were supposed to go to Las Vegas. Triple knockdown as Khalil Shabazz able to hit that one. Shabazz, as we mentioned, had 31 points in the opener against UMass Lowell. He's done that before. He had 30 against BYU last year. 17 double-figure games. And he's become more of a complete player from last year to this year. Inside, and they get the foul. And that's on Samba Kane. Shabazz went to a great Basketball factory high school in Rainier Beach And you talk about some of the players that have come out of there Dejounte Murray played at Rainier Beach and remember Terrence Williams who played at Louisville played the NBA was there Nate Robinson and Kevin Porter jr. Went to Rainier Beach as well Sam Hauser Knocking that one down as Virginia leads it by seven. Under 16 to go first half. Ouye off the mark. Shabazz tipping that one, collects it. And San Francisco, that one off the glass, wouldn't go. Kane rebound, tries to put it back, high off the glass, how's it aboard? And Casey Marcel had a chance to get that loose ball, but just bent over at the waist. It didn't wind up getting it. He'll probably hear about that from Tony Bennett about getting on the floor for it. Hauser couldn't hit. Such a good job by Virginia in transition defense. It's part, just part of their DNA defensively. They don't send, they don't go to the offensive glass much. They, they will trade offensive rebound opportunities just to take away your transition. What a block by Marcel. Perfectly timed. Out of bounds, and DJ Carstensen says it'll be San Francisco basketball. That's when we return Virginia by seven. The ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Homelite. Selling starts at Homelite. Get started for free at homelite.com. And Carvana, the new way to buy a car. I need to sell my house. Now, there are a lot of places that claim to know how much it's worth, but they don't really know my house or my neighborhood, and they definitely don't show me all my options. That's where Homelight comes in. I just answer a few questions, and Homelight gives me a side-by-side -side comparison of my options, personalized for my needs. And they'll show me what verified buyers will pay for my house right now. It's easy, and it's free. No matter how you choose to sell your home, selling starts at Homelight. Get started today at homelight.com. It's a calling that's kept us free. It's a place to belong. What's the calling? It's doing a job that makes a difference. Serving your community and your country. It's part-time service where the impact is full-time. What's your calling? AFreserve.com Always be ready to seize the moment when inspiration strikes. Make the most of this opportunity <laughs> during Mazda's season of inspiration. Get 0.9% APR for up to 60 months and no payments for 90 days. Mention the Cavaliers, the defending national champs, go back to last year. Had a little bit of a rough start, but finished 23 and 7, 15 and 5, ended on an eight game winning streak. They led the NCAA in scoring defense. That is nothing new. But they were last in the ACC in offense. They did sweep Duke, North Carolina, and Virginia Tech in the regular season. And so, you know, again, Jay, you and I have called a ton of these early season tournaments. And this year is going to be a little bit different. But Tony Bennett knows 
that the team he is watching right now will likely be vastly different come February. No question. And they're going to be just so much better. I mean, I was so impressed last year, not just with the improvement that Virginia made over the course of the year, but the attitude they took into it. Instead of sort of this woe is me, we can't score attitude, they adjusted and they just kept grinding it out. And I remember Tony Bennett talking to us about that quote he read off of Stan Warinka's arm. I think he had a tattooed on his arm, the tennis player. Yep. From Samuel Beckett. Ever tried, ever failed. No matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. And the, the attitude they had of just improving and winning with what they had and continuing to grind it out was just so impressive. Mention that tattoo. Yeah, there it is. Dan Babrinka. I wonder if some of that hair is available for transplant onto my head. A couple turnovers early in the game for Virginia, a team that does not turn the ball over very much. Come for the basketball, stay for the forearm here, Jokes. <laughs> UVA <laughs> leading it 9 2, and Trey Murphy, the third, has. Checked in coming off the 21 point effort against Towson with six for eight. That one inside and fouled is Dimitri Rivni. Yeah, six for eight from three point range. And he's done that before. I mean, that tied a career high for Trey Murphy and three pointers made in the game when he was at Rice. Sat out last year, but hit 75 three pointers a year before at Rice. Do you have a general take as we take a look at Murphy and coming on the eligibility waiver? He was able to play on Wednesday against Towson. Do you have a general opinion on transfers in the game of college basketball? Because coaches clearly, it's unsettling for them. How do you feel about it? Well, the, the NCAA's transfer policy has been just a hot mess for a long time now. And the waiver process is one of the biggest uh, difficulties in, in the fact that transfer policy makes zero sense and has made zero sense for a long time. I think the, the thing to do while they're trying to figure out the right policy uh, and it is to let all transfers right now be eligible right away uh, and, and quit messing with this dumb waiver business. Uh, because most guys are getting waivers and then the ones that are sitting out and aren't getting their waivers The reason their waivers being denied doesn't make any sense at all And they're the NCAA is giving extra years of eligibility because of the pandemic Why don't you just give the give the, the transfers their immediate eligibility waiver and be done with it? Because uh, you're just piling up players that way. I mean, do we want these guys to be playing when they're 25 years old? But give them the waiver Is there anything to the argument in terms of the idea that coaches are the ones getting paid the money and they have the ability to move and leave for the most part whenever they want? Well, that that is an, that is an argument that, that can be used as to what the right transfer policy is. You know, the idea that, that athletes are students like any other student, why should they have to sit out for an extracurricular activity? If the reasoning for sitting out is good and it's not just punitive in order to, to dissuade someone from transferring, because there are good reasons for transferring, um, then I'm fine with, with sitting out if there's a good policy reason for it. But this whole waiver business uh, has gotten out of hand and the NCAA needs to do something about it uh, because it's wrong that one player should sit while another is eligible just because the school that they're leaving hasn't consented to the immediate eligibility waiver. That's like getting divorced and having your ex-spouse determine who, who you can date next. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. Virginia with the early 11-5 lead, under 13 to go here first half. Kihei Clark. And they get the foul. I think Clark wanted the basket. As that foul will go against Bouye. Let's take another look here. I thought the, the shot fell way short that's why it was grabbed well maybe it didn't yeah, maybe it had the opportunity 
Well, remember last year, Kihei Clark is just such a great defender and playmaker, passer. How much pressure was on his shoulders to score last year? See how close this was to the rim. Yeah, uh, it looked like it hit the rim, but it was short. But you're talking about a guy that came in, they wanted all his freshman year, and he was originally committed to UC Davis. And I think that initially Tony Bennett thought he helped them with some ball handling for a bit, defensive pressure, and he just showed an ability to hang in as a freshman and was a big time contributor. Huge, I mean, and, and he's such a great defender. And it's not, it's not just that he's a pest. I mean, he stays in front of you and is so disruptive defensively. Banked home, knocked down, straight on from Jamari Bouye. That was expertly defended by Virginia. And just a great shot. There's nothing you can do about it. When you bank it in from straight on, EA Clark triple. That won't go. Rebound pulled down by Yurkatan. And the Dons come the other way. San Francisco is building a, a very nice program under Tom uh, Todd Golden. And but boy, what a tough league to play in, especially this year. It's one thing St. Mary's is outstanding under Randy Bennett, but Gonzaga is better than ever. This team they've got this year, it, it is legit national championship good. Virginia and San Francisco. And in the early going, Jamari Bouye. Bouye. What if I could buy online at Discount Tire and get the same advice I get from the experts in the store? You can. Our Treadwell Tire Guide finds the perfect tire for you based on your driving habits. I want to save time and book an appointment online. Book your appointment, get expedited check-in, and be placed at the front of the line for the next available day. I have the choice of never leaving my car when I get to the store. The touchless experience. So simple. It's genius. Find out more at DiscountTire.com. I don't even think I can make this at home for $3.99. No, you have to buy the meat, you have to buy the queso, you have to buy the bread, you have to buy the cheese, you gotta buy the grill, <laughs> you gotta buy everything. Queso burger. Ooh. We absolutely loved selling our house. No, they didn't. It wasn't hard or stressful at all. Lies. These are actors hired to convince you that selling a house <laughs> is easy. And this is you trying to sell your home. A lot can go wrong. That's why you need home light. Homelight crunches the data from the top brokerages to identify the best agents who can sell your house faster and for more money. Or get real offers from verified buyers who will purchase your home in a matter of days. It doesn't matter how you want to sell your home. Selling starts at Homelight. Hi, can I get one espresso shake and one Oreo espresso shake? Is it espresso? Espresso. 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 Espresso, espresso shake. No, espresso I, or espresso? It's espresso. Well, the University of San Francisco had a pretty storied history. Led by Bill Russell, they won back-to-back -back national titles, 1955, 1956. And they have had a number of great players play for them. Of course, Pete Newell was the coach. He was not their coach when they won the national title. That was Phil Wolford. But Bill Russell, Part of that 60 game win streak that John Wooden would eventually surpass with UCLA. And San Francisco was the only school to offer Bill Russell a scholarship. They played with Casey Jones for the Dons during that period. And, you know, there are only, I think it's 16 programs that have won multiple national championships, and USF is one of those, one of those 16. You mentioned all the great players that have played there. I mean, the program was shut down in the early 80s. I mean, they had Phil Smith played there. Bill Cartwright was there. Winford Boynes. Quentin Daly. James Hardy played there as well.
Yeah, they get shut down for a time, and now, I mean, there is a bit of a disparity. You talked about going to break how good Gonzaga is, and BYU, certainly their athletic programs are on a money level that's quite a bit higher than. Yes, that's a good point. What San Francisco's capable of spending. Yeah, the resources that Gonzaga can throw at basketball, there's no way that, that the majority of teams in the West Coast Conference can keep up with them. Flying in for the rebound is Yerkentam, and the Don's the other way. Booyah. Right side, Reedney knocks down a three. It's an 8-0 run. The Don's loving it. We're tied at 11. Well, Reedney's coming off a, a terrific game as well. I mean, he can really shoot it. 18 points, 10 rebounds. In the win against Towson, they lost to UMass Lowell in their opener. They're playing four games in five days. Getting off to such a tough start. You know, USF is bringing a lot more energy and fight right now than Virginia, which is unusual. But Todd Golden really likes his guard core. He feels like his guards can compete with anybody. He's disappointed with the first game against UMass Lowell. Just wasn't wasn't their sort of style of play. They didn't defend and rebound the way they normally do. But, I mean, if, if Jamari Bouye and Khalil Shabazz are going to hit shots and you get Reedney coming in and knocking shots down, you can spread out this Virginia pack line defense a little bit and make it more difficult. Bouye's got eight, and the Duns have the lead, 9.31 to go. San Francisco pushing the ball up the court and Bouye with a, a beautiful pass on the back cut. And then Reedney was spotted up on the other side of the floor ready to shoot when the ball arrived. That's just good offense. You don't see a lot of buckets scored on Virginia in transition. The Dodds started one for 11 from the floor and since they hit four of their last five shots. Kihei Clark the trigger on the inbound. The screen for the screener action that was defended very well by USF. Hauser gets to the bucket but could not finish. Much better job getting back in transition by Virginia on that possession. It's everything around the perimeter, good cut. You got the, the ball screen, you can slip it, go to the basket, one on one in the post. Usually that's going to get doubled, but because of the perimeter shooting, it seems like Tony Bennett's decided he don't want to double in the post. He'll go one on one in there just to keep San Francisco from getting open threes. Off backing down, kicks out to Kihei Clark. Now Hauser. Well defended by San Francisco. Morcel the jump or the pull up goes. What a difference for Casey Morcel. Did not shoot the ball particularly well last year. But such a good on ball defender. And he does have that pull up jump shot, so he's improved. Nice move inside Josh Coonan. Coonan's the best interior defender for this Don's team, and Todd Golden was saying he, he's not himself yet because he's coming off a knee injury. 24 starts last year. He had one of his best games last year against Arizona State. 10 points, 10 rebounds against the Sun Devils. Clark three wouldn't go. Coonan swoops in for the board. And Bouye the other way. The Don's have a three-point advantage. Good hands, knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with San Francisco. Our under eight timeout. It's a 13-2 run for Todd Golden's team. Who are you? You're so me. Thanks, Captain Obvious. I'm you from the future, here to warn you about 2020. Can't be that bad, right? 
Let's just say it gets a bit dramatic. There's no toilet paper, no hand sanitizer. So far, the Don started out one for 11, Jay. They've hit five of their last seven shots. Well, they're playing much better defense, and they're playing with much more energy. They started out one for nine, and part of that was an energy thing. Uh, they're trying to feel things out but they weren't given the same sort of collective effort on the defensive end, and they ratcheted that up and really turned things around. Jumper too strong that time from Reedby and Virginia basketball. The goal for San Francisco in every game is to get six or more kills, and a kill is defined by Todd Golden and most coaches as getting three consecutive stops. And that's going to be very difficult against a quality opponent like Virginia, but this is a, a has a chance to be a good defensive team. For a reminder, after our game, we'll have the inaugural Bad Boy Mowers Crossover Classic Championship game. It comes your way at 1:30, number 15, West Virginia going up against Western Kentucky. I tell you this much, Jay, the Big 12, at least at the top end, should be pretty loaded when you're talking about West Virginia, Kansas, Baylor, Texas Tech. It's been loaded every year in the past several years. I mean, I think the Big 12's made as good an argument as almost anybody for best conference in the country over the last few years. And it's going to be ridiculously good again. Inside Shedrick, the block. A foul on San Francisco. So Khalil Shabazz picks up his first foul. That'll put Virginia into the one and one. Hey, Clark, really good free throw shooter, although was not able to knock down his first to 88% a season ago. One shot. He averaged just under 11 points and six assists last year. His numbers were, were good. The, the problem was the amount of minutes he had to play. He never came out of the game. Yeah, he led the ACC in minutes per game at close to 38. And yeah, now he gets, a, he gets a break, so you're fresher. And it's not just, you know, he can run all day. It's not the physical part. But it's nice to get just a mental break every every now and again. And Reese Beekman comes into the ball game now for Virginia to give him that break. Hauser comes flying in for the rebound. And this is Beekman here as Clark will take a breather. He's Beekman, the prize freshman from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's got a really good feel for the game. He can also defend. Tough shot. Jumper off the mark and down. Shabazz into the front court. The Dons have played well. They lead it by a point, close it on six to go. First half. In our home light classic, John Chompy, Jay Billis, and the jumper is good. Khalil Shabazz had 31 against UMass Lowell in their opener. And Shabazz with five in this one. They used the, the really high ball screen. I mean, that ball screen was set by Kane. I mean, a good 30-some 30, 30 feet from the basket. And gave Shabazz the opportunity to get some space and then step into that shot. Cavaliers won for their last 14 from the floor. And they get the foul on Beekman. Now watch how high this ball screen is set. I mean, that's closer to midcourt than it is the top of the key. And a nice little crossover, and Beekman's still going the other way for the step back. But he gets right over the screen and runs into his own man just a little bit. But I'm not sure you want to guard and then pressure out that high. Yeah. It's one of the things that's made its way into the college game. You know, with Steph Curry and guys in the NBA shooting those deep three-pointers. I mean, 12 years ago, it was toes on the line for three-pointers of the college game. And right. now you're seeing guys 
stretch and take three-pointers from deeper beyond the three-point line like the NBA. Well, the key is if you've got shooters, which San Francisco does, yeah. spacing, we talk about spacing all the time being important. If you can't shoot, spacing doesn't matter. The key is can you, can you shoot the ball so you can stretch the defense? And that allows you uh, driving lanes, cutting lanes, it really spreads the defense out. And so for, for Virginia, this pack line defense, they're not in a, a tight pack. Good awareness there by Shabazz to fire it up, but it's a shot clock violation. The early reviews on our broadcasts here have been exactly that. Good spacing, no shooting. Yes, exactly. Not a lot of... Not a lot of unity, but the live reads have been excellent. The pacing on the live reads. Yep. And good block flying in there is Kane with the rejection. They'll go possession arrow, and it belongs to Virginia. Son of Kane, a junior who started at Illinois and then wound up at Indian Hills Community College, but that's an excellent block and blocked it with his left hand. Perfect timing. This team has a lot of length and athleticism up front. And speed and shooting in the backcourt. Yeah, Bouye and Shabazz are quick and can create trouble with the ball in their hands. And so you get an opportunity. Todd Golden get a chance to play against one of the better teams in the country right now. Well, he's got a lot of options. I mean, I, I think it was discouraging, or at least he, he felt a, a momentarily discouraged after the UMass Lowell game that, that his team didn't play the way he expected them to play. They, they weren't as tough defensively. They weren't tough on the glass. But that is certainly not the team that played against Towson and not the team that he's seeing right now. This is the, this is the way he wants his group to play. Yeah, he was especially disappointed with the effort on the glass. Felt like they were soft rebounding. Well, they shot the ball so poorly, you're probably going to get out rebounded when you miss that many shots. But it was the fact they gave up so many offensive rebounds that was especially disappointing to Todd Golden. Hawthorne lost the handle and near the front court. Thomas will the 10th side in for Virginia. Chedrick jumper. Rebound pulled down by Shabazz. One for their last 16. The Cavaliers from the floor. And this is not representative of how Virginia has been playing or how they can play. An illegal screen. Yeah, they get Tavi Yerkatam with that foul. His second, the Dons, though, the leading number four team in the country by two. ESPN's exclusive presentation. And how about San Francisco leading this one by two? Time now for today's game track. It's brought to you by Roman. Virginia started off filling it up. Three of four. They're one for their last 16. And Bouye and Shabazz, 13 to the 19. And here we are. Virginia with the ball. And tie with a two or take the lead with a three. Good baseline drive. And over in the corner, Reese Beekman out of the timeout. And Virginia needed that one. Good grief. That was a scoring drought and shooting drought of biblical pro uh, proportions. Give off here. Bouye with the shot clock winding down. Gets inside. Huff swats that one away. You really have to be able to execute at the end of a clock against Virginia because they are going to make you run offense and get down to the end of it. Hey. 
Inside and flipping that one up and in is your contend. Good move. San Francisco is shooting just over 30% in this first half, and they're ahead. And it's because Virginia is shooting just over 20%. Yet another turnover. Hauser loses the handle. What a move. Good quick move there by Shabazz, but couldn't convert. Huff went down hard. And at the other end, it's Reese Beekman with the two. He's got five. And he's come in and provided some nice energy for Virginia. Knocked down that shot in the corner. Doing a solid job defensively. They go with Beekman and Clark together. Coming up, we got the Jeep halftime report. We'll take a look around college basketball. Virginia, where do they fit? In the national title landscape. It's all coming up. Jeep halftime report. Well, Virginia is one of the teams that can win it. It doesn't look like it right now, given how they've shot the ball in the first half, but I don't think that's representative of what Virginia is capable of offensively. It's a much better offensive team than we saw last year. It's a 9 2 run for the Cavaliers. I think we saw another team last night. It's got a chance to win it all in Villanova. Yes. And Villanova, both these teams are going to continue to get better and better and both control the tempo of the game as well as any team in the country. But I would say uh, of the teams that I've seen and really taken a look at, I haven't seen anybody that scores as easily as Gonzaga and has as many weapons. Gonzaga, they hung 102 on Kansas yesterday. That was not a good pass or a good play by Kihei Clark. That is unusual. He is not usually loose with the basketball. Huff rebounds the Reebdy miss, and Virginia with the ball up by three. They just have not been able to get in sync offensively, and credit to the Dons, both ends of the court. This is not, this is a, a little bit of a change in offense for Virginia. They're not running their mover blocker sides because of the ability to stretch the floor. They're giving a, a different offensive look. So it's going to take them some time to, it's still early in the season, obviously. It's going to take everybody some time. 30 second timeout called by Todd Golden. Three point advantage, Virginia. Always be ready to seize the moment when inspiration strikes. Make the most of this opportunity <laughs> during Mazda's season of inspiration. Get 0.9% APR for up to 60 months and no payments for 90 days. And welcome back, Virginia. Uh, top by three, John Chomby, Jay Billis from the Home Light Classic, the Mohegan Sun, Bubbleville, college basketball here in Connecticut, Uncasville. And really a remarkable job by everybody here at the Mohegan Sun to get this bubble going, and the protocols have been strict, but it is uh, certainly worth it to get all these games in and in a safe and healthy way. And you're leaving me after today. Yeah, I have to I have to get out of the bubble to my own bubble. Read me off the mark, and that is the way the first half comes to a close. Virginia finishes strong on a 9-2 run. Yeah, the Cavaliers at the break lead it by three. It just wasn't all bad, but if they take better care of the ball in the second half. I think they're in, in pretty good shape to, to win by a decent margin. Let's take a look at our first half stats, and they're brought to you by Home Light. As Jay mentioned, both teams shooting under 30% from the three point line. Virginia, two of eight. San Francisco did hit four three pointers, and the turnovers were an issue. But Virginia ended the half on a 9 2 run, and they begin the Cavaliers do with the basketball. Clark wanders into the paint, kicks out Hauser. 
Almost a turnover there just on the ball reversal. And Reese Beekman, the freshman, starting the second half for Virginia, gives him another ball handler. He did a good job when he came in in the first half. Morcell with the jumper. That'll go. Nice little step back move by Casey Marcel. And boy, the improvement he's made from last year to this. He's got the ability to be an excellent defender. Feet inside, and all alone was Yurkatan, but he couldn't put it in. Got contested late by Huff. He's yeah, a good Huff. shot blocker. He is a good shot blocker. And another guy who's really improved his offensive game over the years. Huff flips it up, soft touch. He's going to be able to drive around a lot of big guys that decide to come out and guard him because he can knock down a perimeter shot as well. He's long, quick, he's gotten str uh, stronger, but he's just a skilled big guy that can play inside or out. Kihei Clark stepping in the passing lane and able to take it away. Hauser goes inside, hangs, but couldn't hit. And now back the other way, it's Milstead. Now those are shots that Hauser's got to finish. Got a little bit of body contact and wasn't able to get that up and in. He's going to get hit with some bigger bodies as we move forward. And Virginia there on the catch. Get there with a hand up on a closeout. Take that shot away. Jumper is good. Good ball movement there by Coonan. To knock that one down, he's got five. Coonan's just a sophomore, but... Todd Golden talking about he's not himself yet. He's looking a lot more like himself now. He's had some really good plays and good moments in this game. Another turnover for Virginia, just taking the ball into trouble. Yeah, good work there inside as Bouye was able to put it in. And down on the floor is Khalil Shabazz, it looks like. I don't know whether... Look like that... Left knee. His teammates looking on. I hope he's okay. It got eerily quiet yeah, it did. in this building. Take a look. Shabazz number zero there. Wonder, there was no contact at all. At all. Something about the push off. It looked like it was almost a, a hyper extension, but. It's good to see him up and walking off. Boy, anytime you see something where there's nobody there. The first thing you think of at, at, at our age is Achilles. No doubt. And uh, it's clearly not that. I didn't say it, but that was, exa yeah, that that was exactly the first, what you're thinking. The first yeah. thing you're thinking. So they'll examine Khalil Shabazz, who in that first half had five points, and he is a guy that can fill it up for them. They'll need him out there if they're going to stay in this one. Two-point advantage for Virginia. John Chomby, Jay Billis, day after Thanksgiving. Hope you're crashed on the couch and just hanging, watching some college troops still to come. we got Western Kentucky and West Virginia in the championship game. Kentucky's, excuse me, Virginia's offense looks much different this year. When Sam Hauser on that last play wound up getting the shot blocked, but there's a lot of pass and cut, pass into a ball screen, slip out of it. And Hauser just needed to give a little ball fake there. Reedney was able to block that shot for San Francisco. And a foul on San Francisco. Todd Golden did not like that call. All right, coming up 3.30 Eastern, number two Notre Dame, number 19 North Carolina, part of a triple header.
of college football today. 7.30 on ESPN. It'll be Oregon and Oregon State. That'll come to you from Corvallis. So Doug McCoy was so late on that pass. A little flex action on the baseline. And Sam Hauser was wide open, but he didn't get the ball right away. Good job tipping it out is Yurkatan. And now the jumper. That'll go for Bouye. An 11-0 run for the Dons. They're up by four. Really remarkable. Just remarkable. San Francisco is just playing harder than Virginia. Just much more alert to quicker to the ball. Clark picks up the dribble and then finds McCoy, who hesitated, flipped it up, rebound pulled down by Coonan. Virginia missing point blank shots, getting to the rim, not finishing when there's a little bit of contact. Highly unusual. He gives San Francisco credit because their defense has been excellent. Khalil Shabazz looking on as he gets treatment on that leg. Not sure whether it's a knee or what. McCoy pulls down the San Francisco miss. And Kihei Clark will lead him into the front court. Virginia and San Francisco, a tight one. The home line classic here from the Mohegan Sun. Bubbleville. John Shock. Jay Billis, the day after Thanksgiving. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's, home for the holidays. Uh, what is it? Banging. This is uh, what I call a banging burger. <laughs> the chilies with the onions yeah. and the queso. Boom. Queso knows where it's supposed to be, where it belongs. Queso burger. Well, the San Francisco Dons have the lead in this basketball game because they've been more alert. Yurkatam knocks the ball back out, and then the pass. Now watch right here. Justin McCoy is going to go get the ball, and when he does, he leaves the ball because it's not his man. You never leave the basketball. He's trying to recover to Kunin, who he is guarding, and left the basketball and allowed Bouye the open three-point shot. If he just stays on him, he could take that shot away. Just little mistakes are adding up for Virginia, and San Francisco has taken advantage. P.A. Clark toss out as they move the basketball. Jumper from Beekman, and that'll go. Bill, a scale of 1 to 10, how much did you enjoy using the bubble function on the Telestrator? I loved it. Yeah. A bubble in Bubbleville. This is an excellent Telestrator. Illustrator. San Francisco by two. So Reese Beekman's come into this game for Virginia. Made some really good plays on both ends of the floor. Heady play to get that shot up at the end of the clock. That's from deep. Short. Yurkatam the rebound. And now Milstead. There's a lot of head shaking going on on Virginia's bench right now. Another offensive rebound for San Francisco. Reevney. And a rebound pulled down. And back the other way go the Cavaliers. Boy, inside left handle good will go and just overpowering a defender there as he is seven. Uh, just a pretty baseline drive and then spinning back to that left hand to get it to go. Milstead had it blocked. That was Beekman with the block. Coonan, Huff blocked that one, couple of blocks there. Closing out, got blown by, and then still was able to recover and block it. Beekman again with a, another positive play, the left-handed finish in transition off of the block by Jay Huff. 6-0 run, Virginia leads, closing out 13 to go. This 
looks a little more like Virginia's defense. The closeouts, the hard hedge, not allowing San Francisco to turn the corner. That one way off from Yurkatan. He made Clark the other way. Basketball Sunday afternoon, two more college hoop matchups featuring three top 20 teams. One Eastern Richmond is in Lexington to take on number 10 Kentucky at Rupp Arena to five Eastern ESPN two at 17th rank Houston going up against 14th rank Texas Tech. It's a Lone Star State showdown at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth. Both those available on the ESPN app. Richmond, by the way, should be pretty good this year. Huh? Richmond's going to be very good this year, and that's a that's a dangerous game for Kentucky. Jacob Gilliard, one of the best players in the country, a opportunity to be Atlantic Ten Player of the Year, and that's going to be a as we talked about with Rhode Island. That's going to be a difficult Player of the Year race to win for any of any of the the four favorites in that. And in that Texas Tech Houston game, Houston's got great guards. You know, Marcus Sasser's coming off a 25 point game, and you know, Texas Tech is going to be excellent again. You know, they've got Mac McClung, who transferred in from Georgetown. Georgetown. And he got off to a great start. Terrence Shannon. They've got Chris Beard's got another outstanding team. And then he's got his fireside chats. There's nothing better than that fireside chat he puts on. That guy can coach. He I can mean, really coach, no doubt. And his his teams consistently play really hard. Good defense by Walter Tensai to take that turn of the corner away from Milstead. Uye to Kunu. And will the tents had his hand up and deflected it. Clark tried to lob. That wouldn't go. It'll end up the other way. Reevee. Uye couldn't convert. Golden wanted a foul. He didn't get the foul. Uh, couldn't. Todd Golden. Go in an espresso shake to mix espresso and a shake. And the ice cream. You Sprinkling sprinkle some more. Oreo on top of that, just really gives it that razzmatazz. Espresso shake. Let's get razzmatazz. Good razzmatazz. It's great. San Francisco coach Todd Golden upset at a no call as Jamari Bouye taking the ball to the basket. Justin McCoy had his hands on him to start and then made contact with the body, not straight up and down. And we're just showing the arms over the head version of it. He also set a record for vertical leap when the play was just made and that that's indicative of a very young coach. No older coach would ever try to leap like that because that would definitely be an Achilles tear. <laughs> no doubt as he finished the chat with DJ Karstensen. And good to see by the way Khalil Shabazz back in the game. Shabazz plays both ends of the floor. He led the West Coast Conference in steals last year at 56. And he's a 41% three-point shooter. So having him back on the floor, even though he doesn't look like he's moving as well as he'd like to, you got to have his scoring out there if San Francisco is going to make a run at winning this thing. That jumper will go from Dimitri Reevney. And they needed that. He's got 10 points. He can really shoot it. And man, he gets that shot up quickly. Got a beautiful stroke. But Trey Murphy needs to be there on the catch with a hand up. That's unusual for Virginia to give up a shot that easily. Coonan rejecting Cody Statman down low. One of the things about Coonan, obviously he can block shots. He's long, athletic. But he can really move his feet. He can switch basically one through four. He can switch out onto a point guard. And Murphy stays quiet. Trey Murphy, the third, who at 21, it is Virginia debut to transfer from Rice. 
Murphy with only four points in this one. San Francisco really trying to spread the floor, running their offense really high, and that gives Bouye the opportunity to get some space. And then he could step back, put up a shot, or get those Jets going and blow by you. Jamari Bouye with 15, and we're tied up at 37. Statman inside, and Virginia has the lead. Nice play by Walter Tensai to drive that ball left. And then dish it to really what you call the dunk spot to Statman along the baseline. Bouye back to work. That man deflects it out of bounds. That pass heading for the corner. And Cunid was waiting, hoping for a catch and shoot. Virginia by two, 10 08 to go in the second half. John Shambi and Jay Billis, the home like classic. But well, we've seen some ridiculously quick guards here in Bubbleville. Whether it's Fats Russell of Rhode Island, Remy Martin, Arizona State. Mari Bouye, I would put in that jet quick class. A really good defender, too. He's got Thomas Walter Tenzai now. I just love saying Walter Tenzai. You and me both. It took a long time to get that one down last year. Yep. I'm so glad he didn't turn pro. Late in the year, I had the privilege of calling that game winning three pointer at North Carolina. Nothing like screaming Walter Tensai. Just good. Work. Easy. I mean, Visser with a going for a ball screen just slipped it right to the basket for the easy layup. But San Francisco has really done a great job of spreading out Virginia. And that is not easy to do, but because they can shoot it from multiple spots, you got to go get them. And he can do that. You know, last year we saw it inside and outside, but a senior from. Bologna, Italy is a transfer from Indian Hills Community College. Yeah, not many people wind up coming from Italy to Indian Hills. Italy to Iowa. Now take a look at number 31, Visser. He'll go right into a ball screen here and just slips it to the basket, and McCoy not in any position to stop it. But you got to stay connected there so that he can't just slip. That was an easy layup, and usually Virginia doesn't allow anything easy. Okay, he just stopped. He's too good of a defender. So three-point game, Damari Milstead gives off, Reevney. Here if the Tam can't hit, Kihei Clark the rebound. And Virginia the other way. You can sit and dissect some of the defensive mistakes that Virginia's made, but they've still only given up 39 points. The issue's been their offense. And Walter Tensai is helping that out, as he's got five. And remember last year, Walter Tensai and Kihei Clark were so big a part of Virginia's offense. If you could take them away, you could really limit Virginia. How about that? Oh. Foul and a three. Khalil Shabazz buries it, and he'll go to the line and a chance at a four-point play. What did Jordan used to say? You reach, I teach, and watch the reach here. It's unusual that you'd see a reach here from Kihei Clark. Reaches in and... Shabazz goes straight up and has the concentration not just to get fouled, but to knock down the shot and get a four-point play. What a big play by Khalil Shabazz. Shabazz with nine. They're within one. Hauser's been super quiet in this one. He's got two points. Ball's not moving from side to side for Virginia. It's a really tough shot, one that Hauser can make. Sam Hauser, the transfer from Marquette. His brother transferred as well from Marquette to Michigan State. Joey Hauser. 
Well, you could see just that that shot that our great crew got to Sam Hauser, just the disappointment Virginia's feeling and how they're playing. 46-43, our score, 7.31 to go. The festivities begin. Shop fivebelow.com or over a thousand locations. Listen up, listen up. I can feel your excitement. the worst theater experience I've ever had. Virginia leading this one by three for the University of San Francisco. It's a dozen in a row against top five opponents. The last time they won against the top five opponent, 1981 against Wichita State. Todd Golden wasn't born then. That's amazing. I was in high school then. Gosh. But Wichita State was legit. Well, so was San Francisco back then in the early 80s. Wichita State had, I think they had Xavier McDaniel, Cliff Levingston, Antoine Carr would have been on that team, Aubrey Sherrod. And I'll bet you Greg Dryling was on that team too, who later transferred to Kansas and wound up playing in the Final Four for Larry Brown. Statman inside, rebound pulled down by Reedney. And a chance for the Dons to take the lead. They hung around this one, played hard. And Shabazz and Bouye have hit shots. Milstead, a little bit strong. And now Clark up ahead. Virginia with the ball up a point. And they get the foul that time on Tommy Yerkitam. All right, coming up next, the inaugural Bad Boy Mowers Crossover Classic Championship game. It'll be West Virginia and Western Kentucky. And that is ahead. That's going to be a great game. West Virginia with their defense rebounding. They're better, a better offensive team this year. But Charles Bassey at Western Kentucky is the real thing, man. That guy can rebound, he can block shots. Really good execution off the out of bounds underneath for Virginia to get a wide open shot for Sam Hauser. He's got six. Western Kentucky beat Memphis. To get to that championship game. Jumper Koenig got it. Huge. We're tied up at 48. Terrific job to find him as the space guy off the action in the middle of the floor. Josh Koenig has had a terrific game, really at both ends of the floor. And look at him running here right to the rim. Playing five out almost against Virginia. Virginia's having to chase right now. Yerkatan, triple, got it! And they're up by three. A lot of, a lot of frustration by Virginia. After that shot, you can see Jay Huff just shaking his head coming down the floor. It's almost like they can't believe they're in this situation. They made 11 three-pointers. And they're open shots. A little screen roll and then replacing up wide open. Kuhn in the lefty knocks it down. And then Yurkatam, same thing. I mean, just a little pick and pop. And Jay Huff really slow getting out there, which is horribly unusual for G Virginia's defense. 11 threes, eight twos. And Kihei Clark able to draw the foul. In terms of field goals, four threes to twos for the Dons. Tony Bennett, five minutes to go, and his team down by three. One of the things you, you think about in this type of, type of situation, you know, San Francisco, as we get five minutes left in regulation, you know, does Virginia, if they if San Francisco keeps hanging around, 
you know, a possession up, possession down, whatever it is. Does Virginia start get a little bit a little bit tight? One point game, the ball in the hands of Jamari Bouye. Who was thinking this after USF started one for nine in this game? Feet inside, Coonan able to track it down. Shot clock is under 10. That one tipped out, wow. They got Yerkatam going over the back. That's his push in the back first. Four. Good instincts to knock that ball back out. Because without the foul, San Francisco would have maintained possession. Yeah. Cavaliers down by one. Hauser. Flips it up and in. A nice move. Coon was able to almost get a piece of that ball as he was going up, and Hauser maintained his concentration and stuck with the stuck with the action there. It's not easy to do. Eight lead changes in this one, and a quick move by Bouye right to the basket. He's got 17. Well, the pack line defense is designed to force everything into the middle, into the pack, into help. You give up baseline, there's nobody there to help. Hauser started to heat up a little bit. Jumper got it. This is the, the difference in offense that we expected to see from the opening tip. It's Hauser being able to knock down shots even with the handout. Very, very little hesitation from Sam Hauser when he's hot. Foul on Reese Beekman. San Francisco hanging around the number four team in the country. It's a one point game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Homelight. Selling starts at Homelight. Get started for free at homelight.com. And Roman, the digital health clinic for men. I need to sell my house. Now, there are a lot of places that claim to know how much it's worth, but they don't really know my house or my neighborhood. And they definitely don't show me all my options. That's where Homelight comes in. I just answer a few questions, and Homelight gives me a side-by-side -side comparison of my options, personalized for my needs. And they'll show me what verified buyers will pay for my house right now. It's easy, and it's free. No matter how you choose to sell your home, selling starts at Homelight. Get started today at homelight.com. What if I could buy online at Discount Tire and get the same advice I get from the experts in the store? You can. Our Treadwell Tire Guide finds the perfect tire for you based on your driving habits. I want to save time and book an appointment online. Book your appointment, get expedited check-in, and be placed at the front of the line for the next available day. I have the choice of never leaving my car when I get to the store. The touchless experience. So simple. It's genius. Find out more at DiscountTire.com. I drive a Pacifica because my kids are winners, and winners deserve the best. These Uconnect theater screens are lit. I just love my Pacifica so much. Ah! With a hybrid, I feel like I can save the world. Two hours of charging, 520 miles of driving. I like that ratio. <sighs> Something for every parent to love with the Pacifica and Pacifica Hybrid. Right now, purchase and get 5391 below MSRP, plus 0% financing on the 2020 Pacifica Hybrid. Plus, you may qualify for up to a $7,500 federal tax credit. Well, certainly throughout the summer, we've seen college athletes being activists in light of the killing of George Floyd in late May. And we saw protests on campuses across country. And one of the things we saw earlier today, some of the athletes taking a knee. And the Cavaliers wearing their unity shirts. They made a video about a month after the George Floyd killing in June. Um, and Tony Bennett emphasized the need for unity. It's really one of the pillars of their program. It's something that 
he's emphasized throughout his time there. And so it's something that you're seeing across college campuses and you're going to keep seeing. And something you expect from campuses which are supposed to be marketplaces of ideas that the players are using their voices and they should. Boy, what a play Todd Golden just ran out of that timeout to get the ball to the pinch post to the elbow. Take away there by Bouye. Here he comes to the corner. Shabazz got it. Wow. That's and they're up by four. That's the 12th three-pointer in this game. And now you're seeing San Francisco playing with a ton of confidence as they've done for most of the game. But you're also seeing Virginia get a little bit tight. That's probably not the shot that Tony Bennett wanted after that three. So Huff not able to answer with a three-pointer. And now Yurkatan giving off Bouye, double team. Yurkatan will try a three. Got it! This is unbelievable. The 13th three. Virginia hits 15 threes against Towson. And San Francisco's turned around and hit 13 against the Cavaliers. It's an 8-0 run. The Dons by seven. Hi, I'm Steve. My ultimate goal for my condition is to put it on the back burner and not have to think about it and Roman allows me to do that. It was really encouraging to be able to complete the online consultation and get my medication to my door before I was even able to go to a sit down at the clinic that I had an appointment with. It doesn't have to be so difficult to find the care and resources that you need. If I had found Roman earlier, it would have made things it come off. And instead of jumping to the ball to take away the ball side of the cut. Kihei Clark doesn't jump in front. Then he gets it stripped. Bouye takes it the other way and finds Khalil Shabazz in the corner in transition for yet another three. And then a little pick and pop and Jay Huff just completely gets lost and Yurkatam hits yet another three. The 13th three point shot made for this San Francisco Don team. And now Virginia down seven. Two minutes to go. Who would have thunk it after San Francisco started this game off going one for nine from the field? Big, big kick out, Kihei Clark. Clark gets inside. Murphy can't hit, loose ball, out of bounds. Virginia basketball. Boy, Who would have thunk, by the way, Jay? San Francisco 21 points in the first half. They've got 40 in the second half. Really a, a, a tremendous performance. And what a great defensive play that Jamari Bouye just made going straight up to contest that shot. Beekman inside puts it in. Boy, he's made so many good plays in this game. Really impressed with Reese Beekman. I think you're going to be seeing he. He and Kihei Clark on the court together a lot this year. Yeah, he started the second half for a reason because he, he showed some real fight in the first half. And they get an offensive foul as on that loose ball, Bouye pushed off and fouled Clark. Really nice job by Kihei Clark. You know, when you try to have an inside hand change. If you show the ball, he goes right behind to knock it away. Just really a great alert play to reach that right hand behind and knock the ball away. It's only their third turnover this half. One -on -one, men, one -on -one. One -on -one for Virginia. Yeah, Clark gets the first. It's a four point game. John Shabby J. Billis, number four, Virginia. In a tough spot, the San Francisco Dons leading this one by three. And a timeout here for Todd Golden. This would be an absolutely monstrous win. And again, he's in the middle of a stretch where they are playing four games in five days. And he touched on the idea of they weren't even sure who they were playing. I guess it's something, Jay, that every coach is going to have to deal with. I mean, heck, 
Virginia opened with Towson. They thought it was going to be Maine. They had to be sent home because of a, a COVID positive. So you're seeing adjustments, but here we are, an opportunity for San Francisco to pick up a huge win. Yeah, and San Francisco playing their, what, third game in three days and coming out with, with this kind of effort. And clearly they were up to play this game, and they've shown it. But with just a minute 23 to go in regulation, leading by three, now the, the key is being strong with the ball. Don't turn it over and make sure you get a good shot down at the other end. They've made their last six three-point shots in a row. Shabazz and Bouye, the two guys, that's where the ball's been most of the time. But you mentioned it's like they're playing five out. All five guys can hit the three-pointer. And they get Beekman with the bump. Number four on the freshman who's got nine points. You know, Virginia's going to be, they're not going to be undisciplined, but they'll go for steals. And right now, if you've got the opportunity for a shot fake, you know, if you're getting a closeout, use it. Shot clock under 10. Shabazz to Bouye, got to go here. Contested, off the mark, rebound, Hauser, and it's Virginia basketball. 45 seconds to go, and San Francisco leads by three. Great defense by Virginia, poor offensive possession for San Francisco. They didn't get into their offense early enough. Inside, basket is good from Justin McCoy. And McCoy. Could have had a three-point play there. There's a lot of contact. A little more than a one-second differential shot clock to game clock, and they call timeout. The Dons do, and Todd Golden will gather his group together. Justin McCoy with the baseline drive, and he jumped into his defender to try to draw that foul. Nice pass along the baseline, and could have easily gotten that call. He wanted it, but it looked like the referees probably thought he created that contact, but that easily could have been a three-point play. Yeah, no easily. Doubt. And that would have been five on your contempt. Yeah, those calls nine times out of ten are, are made and go against the defense. It was a good timeout by Todd Golden because of the trap that came in the coffin corner up near half court you basically had to do that but now it's important you uh, you really have to work hard to get this ball inbound safely got a two second differential shot clock to game clock san francisco i mean they really don't they're gonna take a shot but they really don't have to yeah. Inside and now Reevney. Oh, did they get the steal out of bounds? And it belongs to San Francisco. And that could have been a foul, there's no question. That was a little surprise. I thought Reevney might take that, might try to take that ball to the basket when he first caught it. But you certainly don't want to make that kind of risky pass. They were very fortunate. You have to be prepared for a trap coming. a number of times yeah that's one of those coin flip calls that are made in a game that's gonna that's where the officials are really in a difficult spot you make a call on the floor and now you're the appeals judge on your own call and it's a different skill set So my thought in watching it twice so far is whatever the call yeah, was. Yeah, you go with the original call. Be. You go with the original call because you know you, you could, if you get it down to one of these things where you gotta, you know, you're looking at did one of the players cut their fingernails this morning and that's going to be the difference. I think you go with the original call because yeah. they could be there a long time. This is a Pruder film type 
stuff to get this one right. How about San Francisco? They were up 61-54 with 2.11 to play. It's going to be San Francisco basketball. All right, so Jay, what has to happen here? They go for a steal and then you foul? Yeah, I mean, I think you give it a little bit of time, uh, but but I think you do have to you do have to consider fouling here because they can just run the clock out. So the foul here and Kunin will go to the line. San Francisco just two for three from the line. It hasn't really been part of their story today. 10.2 seconds left. And a Virginia timeout. Tony Bennett wanting to talk about the different things that he wants to do depending upon the score. So we'll see how this plays out with Kunin at the line, who's a good free throw shooter. I mean, they're, they're, you know, you can make none, one, or both. So they're different scenarios to go over if you have to get a three or you want to get a if two will win it or tie it and now if he makes both if Kunin makes both and they're up by three what's your perspective on what Todd Golden should do in terms of do you foul in order to prevent them from getting a tying three-point shot there's still a ton of debate among college coaches as to what the right thing to do is I think if you can get it under five you foul because so many things have to go wrong for you to, to lose the game when you're up three under five but you know you tell that to bill self he don't want to hear it he's gonna he's gonna play it out with his defense he's not fouling up three so again todd golden's team trying to pick up their first win against the top five opponent since 1981 and at the line it's the sophomore from australia josh Cooney. Short rebound Huff, and here we go. Down by one, Virginia, chance to win it. Kihei Clark, Huff, Hauser, catch and shoot. Off the mark, tip won't go, and San Francisco wins it. How about that? Todd Golden and the San Francisco Dons pick up the victory 61 60 and they upset the number four team in the country what a second half performance by san francisco